Hey guys, Marco here from Aviero Live CS. Welcome back to my channel. Today we'll continue reviewing flight controls, and this is part two of the flight control system. Today we will be talking about roll control, pitch control, and yaw control. Let's start with roll control. The ailerons are the primary surfaces for roll control. The flight spoilers assist the ailerons. Roll commands come from the control wheels and the autopilot. The control wheels are connected to each other and then connected by cables to the aileron power control units or PCUs, which you can see here. Hydraulic systems A and B supply power to the aileron PCUs and the fly spoiler PCUs. So you can see here, system A, system B, PCUs and the fly spoiler PCUs here. The aileron trim switches send an electrical signal to the fill and centering mechanism to set new aileron and control wheel positions. The trim switches must be moved together for the system to work. When the autopilot is engaged, the autopilot roll channel moves a cable to the fill and centering mechanism which, in turn, moves a cable to the aileron PCUs. The four flight spoilers help the ailerons to roll the airplane. The spoilers are hydraulically operated. The flight spoilers start to move after more than 10 degrees of control wheel movement. In a turn, the spoilers come up to kill lift on the wind with the up aileron and stay down on the wind with the down aileron. The spoiler switches are for maintenance personnel to do system tests. You can see them here. Control for the aileron trim system are at the aft end of the aisle stand. The aileron trim indicators are on the top of the control columns. And here you can see them. All right. Now let's talk about some abnormal situations with the roll control. If you experience jammed ailerons or spoilers, the aileron transfer mechanism allows you to roll the airplane. And you can see the aileron transfer mechanism here. If the ailerons jam, force applied to the first officer's control wheel operates the spoilers to roll the airplane. The captain's control wheel does not move. If the spoiler system jams, Force applied to the captain's control wheel operates the aileron to roll the airplane. The first officer's control wheel does not move. If all hydraulic pressure to the ailerons is lost, the pilots can manually control the ailerons. But greater force is required because of cable friction and air pressure loads. So this is about the roll control. Now let's talk about pitch control. The elevators are the primary flight controls used to change the airplane pitch attitude. The stabilizer assists the elevator. The elevator is moved by the control columns, autopilot, and MAC train system. The control columns are connected to each other by the transfer mechanism, which allows elevator control if a part of the elevator system jams, and to cable systems, which connects the control columns to the elevator PCUs. The PCUs use hydraulic system A and B pressure to move the elevators. And you can see the PCUs here. An engaged autopilot sends a signal by cable to the elevator fill and centering unit. This signal is added to stabilizer position, hydraulic pressure, and pitot static inputs in the elevator fill computer to tell the elevator how much to move. The elevator fill and centering unit, as you can see here, supplies artificial control field to the pilots through the control column. As swept wing airplanes, like the 737, increase their speed toward Mach 1, they start to pitch down because of the aerodynamic forces on the airplane. The matrix system is automatic at speeds above Mach 0.615. The air data part of the Adirus 
sees airspeed and sends signals to the FCCs. The FCCs send a command to the Mach trim actuator and the actuator tells the field and centering unit to make an elevator adjustment. The airplane pitch attitude also changes if these components send a command to the horizontal stabilizer. Cables transmit manual commands from the pilot stabilizer trim wheels to the stabilizer. Two control wheel trim switches send electrical signals to the two speed main electric portion of the trim motor to move the stabilizer. You can see them here. These switches must be moved together. With the flaps extended, the trim moves faster than with flaps up. The engaged autopilot commands changes to the stabilizer with signals to the autopilot portion of the trim motor. Movement of the stabilizer trim switches disconnects the engaged autopilot. Most controls and indicators of the stabilizer trim system are on the control stand, as you can see here. The stabilizer trim indicators point to the units of stabilizer trim and the green band, as you can see here, show the approved takeoff trim range. An intermittent horn sounds if you try to take off when the stabilizer trim is not in the takeoff range. An automatic speed trim system adjusts trim to improve manual flight characteristics. The system operates when the autopilot is disengaged and there are airplane conditions of low gross weight, aft center of gravity and high thrust. The system most frequently operates during low speed high thrust conditions, such as takeoff or go around. A speed trim sends a signal through the autopilot trim system to move the stabilizer. When you engage the autopilot or make a stabilizer trim input, a speed trim stops. Now let's talk about some abnormal operations with the pitch control. And we talked about some of these slides in our previous video, so please feel free to uh, uh, hit the link above and uh, you will review all the controls and indicators for the flight controls. But we are going to talk about these abnormal situations again here. When the field differential pressure light and the lights that follow come on, this causes the master caution and annunciators to also come on. This light illuminates when the elevator field computer senses a significant hydraulic pressure difference between hydraulic system A and B and the flaps are up. The field system will operate with only one hydraulic system. This condition does not require crew action in flight. An air pressure differential caused by a blocked Peter tube will also cause the field differential pressure, master caution, and flight control annunciator lights to come on. The speed trim fail light illumination tells us of a dual channel speed trim failure in the flight control computer. A single channel speed trim failure makes the master caution light and the flight control annunciator come on when the master caution system recall is activated. No crew action is required in flight for single or dual failure. The MAC trim fail and master caution lights illuminate if there is a dual channel MAC trim system failure. This slide here. A single channel MAC trim failure makes the master caution light and the flight control annunciator come on when the master caution system recall is activated. Again, no crew action is required in flight for single or dual failure. The step out of trim light, that you can see here, can illuminate for a moment if the autopilot requires a large trim change and the stabilizer is not in the correct position. When this light illuminate for a longer time, a malfunction has occurred. This could require you to hold the control wheel, disconnect the autopilot and trim the stabilizer. If you move the control column opposite to the trim system or the control column is moved out of the usual range, a cutout switch stops all stabilizer trim operation. When stabilizer trim is stopped out of range, 
move the stabilizer trim override switch to override. This permits stabilizer trim operation. Now, let's talk about yo control. The rotor controls yo, the movement around the European's vertical axis. The one-piece rotor is attached to the vertical stabilizer. You can see the vertical stabilizer here, and you can see the rotor here. With hydraulic power, you can adjust the rotor through the rotor pedals or the rotor trim system. And you can see the pedals here. Automatic inputs to the rotor come from the yield damper during normal operations or from the standby yield damper during manual reversion flight. The yield damper operations are controlled through two stall management yield damper or SMYD computers. So you can see these computers here. Rotor pedal inputs moves cables to the field and centering unit and the rotor PCUs. The field and centering unit sets the rotor pedal position and fill. And you can see that unit right here. The main rotor PCU uses hydraulic system A and B pressure to move the rotor. A standby rotor PCU is supplied power by the standby hydraulic system. It operates when hydraulic systems A and B are not available. One of the PCUs can supply rotor control. The rotor trim system can move the rotor to remove unwanted forces from the rotor pedals. Rotor trim inputs change the field and centering unit neutral point. This makes the rotor pedals and the rotor move. The rotor trim control and indicator are in the aft electronic panel. You can turn the rotor trim control to the left or right to change rotor trim. The indicator shows the rotor trim position, as so you can see here. The off flag in view, this flag here, means that electrical power to the trim indicator is lost. The yo damper prevents dodge roll. It also helps with turn coordination and gauss damping. Yo damper electronics are in the two stall management yo damper computers. The left stall management yo damper computer supplies yo damper inputs to the main rotor PCU to tell how much to move the rotor. The right stall management yield damper computer supplies turn coordination, gauss damping, and dodge roll prevention through the standby yield damper. The Avirus, which you can see here, send speed and yield rate data to the stall management yield damper computers. Adiru data is added to control wheel inputs and sent through the yield damper to tell the PCUs how much to move the rotor. The yield damper indicator, if installed, shows the inputs to the rotor, but the rotor pedals do not move. Standby yield damper inputs to the rotor are not shown on the yield damper indicator. Pilots can override either main yield damper or standby yield damper inputs with the rotor pedals or rotor trim. Now let's talk about some abnormal situations with the yo control. The yo damper light here comes on when the yo damper disengages. If there is a momentary problem, the yo damper may reset when the switch is moved from off to on. The yo damper does not operate if hydraulic system B is not available. In this condition, the yo damper switch stays on and the yo damper light does not illuminate. Moving the system B flight controls to standby rotor moves the yo damper switch to off and the yo damper light illuminates. The yo damper cannot be engaged when only system B is inoperative. If hydraulic pressure from system A and B is not available, the rotor must be operated by the standby hydraulic system. Moving the flight control switches to standby rotor it starts the standby hydraulic system, which supplies power to the standby rotor PCU. If we move the yield damper switch to on, yield damper protection is now available through the standby yield damper. If a rotor cable fails in flight, 
use the rotor trim to make rotor inputs. If the rotor pedals jam, normal rotor and nose wheel steering inputs are not possible. Rotor trim is also not available. If you think frozen water causes jam, descend when possible to a warmer air. So guys, this is the end of the presentation for today. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please do it now. And don't forget to hit the bell so you will be notified once I upload a new video. If you think this video could be useful for somebody else, please share it. And that's going to help me a lot to grow this channel. So next week, we will continue talking about flight controls. Until then, guys, take care and hope to see you soon.